What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London and in this video I'll be telling you guys about all of the mistakes that I made in my teenage years and in my early 20s regarding money and finances. And although uh, right now I'm 27 years old and now I'm obviously a doctor and I do have a salary and I'm earning more money obviously because I have a job, even though that is the case, when I was in my teens and when I was 16, 17, 18, early 20s when I had no money and I wasn't earning any money at all there still were things that I definitely could have done in order to be more financially educated and make smarter decisions that would have made my late 20s and early 30s much much easier now it's not too late so all of these principles are things that I've recently learned throughout my 20s that will hopefully set me up for a brighter future in my late 20s and early 30s so let's go ahead and start off with the first mistake that I made in my early 20s which was not being financially educated not spending the time to actually learn about how finances work how the economy works and leaving all of that up to the experts now to be honest with you guys i only really sat down to think about how money actually works when i was probably about 25 26 and i really wish that i did this so much earlier there's so many things that impact every aspect of our life uh, regarding the economy and regarding finances like how does money work where does money come from what is money when did this idea of fiat currency and money come from and when was it started how does interest work how do credit cards work how do we pay tax what is fractional reserve banking there's so many things in finance and in the economy that is super important that will affect your everyday life and i know that if you're in your early 20s or in your, your teenage years you don't really care about this i certainly didn't but i really wish i took the time to actually understand these concepts because like i said it will affect you on a daily basis especially when you reach your late 20s since understanding these concepts in my mid-20s i've really been able to make a lot of better financial decisions for example investing in the stock market investing in the S&P 500, investing in property as well. I've really been able to sit down on my laptop and think about what I want to do to set myself up for the future. And this wouldn't have taken that long. I literally read a couple of books and that taught me so much about all of these important concepts. And literally overnight or in a few days after I read a couple of books, I was able to start making smart investments literally immediately. So if you want to spend time learning about these concepts, guys, these books have been so helpful, have been game changing, and it really helped me learn about finances. The first one being talking to my daughter about the economy. I actually read this book probably about two weeks ago, changed my life forever. I hated learning about the economy before, but he really gave this story and talked directly like he was speaking to his daughter, which made understanding the economy so much easier. The next book is The Psychology of Money, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and finally, Money, A User's Guide. These are literally four books, guys. You can listen to them on Audible and just spend a few hours on them. And I promise you, learning about how finances work will absolutely change your life forever. That's the first mistake that I wish I didn't make. The second mistake that I still laugh about until this day is buying liabilities instead of assets. Now, let me tell you guys a quick story. One thing that I really, really loved and wanted, I don't ask me why, was to get a car for myself. So I passed my driving uh, license when I was, I think, 17 or 18. Then when I was 19, I was in my second year of my biomedical science degree and I spent all summer working. I literally spent the entire summer of my second year of my degree working in a Mexican restaurant. I worked so hard for probably about seven pounds an hour i saved up around 700 pounds and i bought myself my very first car which i was so happy about at the time but looking back now it was a huge mistake and i wish someone told me to just stick to riding a bike or taking the bus it is not worth it that car that i bought was a huge liability i drove that car to the university of birmingham where i was studying and i kept it with me at birmingham and i didn't actually use it right i wasn't even allowed to park on campus i used that car to do my shopping on a saturday or go to the gym every now and again it was such a waste of money i was paying like 250 pounds a month for my insurance i was paying for tax which was like 30 pounds i was paying for fuel and eventually which is really sad the car actually broke down like two or three months later after actually buying the car which was going to cost me hundreds and hundreds of pounds to actually fix so to the point where i was like listen this is a waste of money and i sold the car for like 200 pounds to um, some young guy like me and i lost a huge amount of time and money just trying to use this car for no bloody reason and I'm not saying the cars, cars are bad. I do have a car now. The cars are only good
good if you need it for a particular purpose. So for example, now I need a car to drive to work because you know I, I have no other choice. Getting the bus or the train will take two hours to get to work instead of 20 minutes driving. So now I use the car as a tool. I can't earn money without getting to work. That is one mistake I made. What I want you guys to do and what I wish I did was use your money to not buy liabilities. A liability is something that will cost you money and will not generate money and will make you lose money, but use it to save for assets. Now, assets are things that generally appreciate in price, appreciate in value, and the things that actually give you money. For example, you might actually save up for a small apartment. Maybe you might buy an apartment and that will, you know, every single year that will increase in value. And you can also get a rental income from this particular apartment. It could be anything, you know, big like an apartment, or it could be something smaller. For example, this laptop I'm using now, I invested in a MacBook Pro. I invested in a camera, which I'm using to film these videos. I did bought this MacBook and this camera many, many years ago. And since doing that, I've been able to actually create these YouTube videos and give myself money from actually doing this. That is the difference between a liability and an asset, guys. Please don't spend money on uh, liabilities. Treat yourself, of course, to small things here and there, but don't make big mistakes like I did, like buying a car when you don't need one. Use it to save for assets that will bring you money and help you with your future. The third mistake that I made that I really wish I didn't was not learning how to invest and starting investing earlier. Now, again, I didn't actually start investing until I was about 24, 25 years old. And I really, really wish I started investing when I was 18, even if it was only putting aside 50 pounds a month, 100 pounds a month, 25 pounds a month. Just starting the habit of getting into investing would really, really help me right now. And I'd have a lot more money than I do right now if I just put 25 pounds aside a month. And I'll show you guys the power of compound interest. So if you decide to invest your money in somewhere like the S&P 500, which is where I invest all of my money, this is a stock market. It is the top 500 companies in the US. US stock market like Apple, Google, Tesla. I essentially own a tiny, tiny share or fraction of a share in these companies and that typically gives you a 7% return on your investment every single month. So let's actually show you guys the power of compound interest. So if let's say my inv initial investment is £100, right, just to open up my account, the S&P 500 will typically make us on average around about 7% per year. Let's say I start investing when I was 17 and now I'm 27. So let's say it's been 10 years. And let's say that every single month I was putting £100 aside. So let's say £25 per week were going to my investments and I was investing it in the stock market. Let's actually see how much money I will have right now. So if I did that uh, and I made that initial investment, the interest earned will be £5,400. I would essentially make £5,400 just purely for free by putting aside £100 a month. And I would now have a total value in my account of £17,509. So the £100 uh, that I put aside would have been £12,000. I would have got £5,000 interest on that. And the total now would be £17,000, which is crazy. And this is something I now do as an adult on a monthly basis. Obviously, it's a lot more than 100 pounds. Sometimes it's a couple of hundred pounds. I put it aside and I've been able to make thousands of pounds just purely by investing. Now, investing, I know it sounds scary, but I actually recommend a video by Ali Abdal on investing. That's actually how I learned about how to get started with investing as well as the books that I read. I really recommend you guys check out these two videos. It's not that complicated, guys. I literally spent maybe a day, my Saturday, just sat down watching videos, understanding how it all works. And again, it changed my life forever. Now, the next mistake that I made when I was in my my late 20s and early teens is not using my time and my money to learn new skills. Now, when I was a teenager, all I cared about was going to the gym and hanging out with my friends and getting into university. When I got into university, all I cared about was getting my degree. It literally probably wasn't until my fifth year of university, which was my second year or my first year of medical school, where I actually sat down and said, I actually need to use my time wisely in order to learn new skills. That's when I actually picked up this camera and I bought a MacBook and I taught myself how to record YouTube videos and how to edit YouTube videos and how to make a business around YouTube. And that one decision I made in order to learn these new skills has changed my life in so many ways, not just financially, in so many ways that I can't actually tell you guys and describe to you how it actually changed my life. And ever since then, I set time aside on a weekly basis in order to read, in order to watch videos and really continue continue the process of learning, continue the process of teaching myself how to um, learn new skills, which will help me earn money in the future and become a lot more employable and a lot more attractive to employers or just in general regarding my own life. For example, again, I keep learning how to improve my business, improve making these YouTube videos, and that really helps me out a lot. The thing is, when you're young, you don't have much money 
but the resource that you do have that you will never have ever again is time and you can really use that time to learn new skills and i really wish i used that time that i had which i don't have right now in order to sit down and, and learn new skills and you can literally do it for free youtube has so much content on there platforms like skillshare i use skillshare to learn how to edit videos you don't need to pay any money at all you just need to sit down be disciplined set aside time and use those platforms out there like on the internet to learn any skill that you literally want to there's literally an unlimited amount of skills you can learn from the internet and that's the next mistake that i wish i never made the next mistake that i really really wish i did not make is not understanding the true cost of spending money when i was in my early teens and i wanted to buy something whether it's you know an xbox or literally whatever it was i did not think about how much it actually truly cost me in order to afford that given thing i literally walk into shop and tap my card and that will be it you need to understand guys when you buy something, you need to look at it in terms of the hours it costs you to actually afford that item. For example, if your hourly rate is £10 per hour and you want to buy an iPhone which costs £1,000, do the maths. It's going to cost you 100 hours of your time in order to afford that given um, item. And that one you know, understanding, that one tip of just seeing it in terms of how many hours it's going to cost you will really discourage people from buying things that they don't need. I bet you that if everyone in the country saw things that way, especially here in the UK, if people saw things that way and they thought about it in terms of how much hours they have to sacrifice with their friends, with their family, doing the things they love, nine times out of 10, they will not make that purchase. So I really wish I saw things in terms of my hours and not in terms of a random value on my bank account, in terms of the hours I must spend to afford that item. Now, of course, as a doctor and as a YouTuber as well, my hourly rate is much higher. So I can afford things like an Xbox. It's much easier to make to afford these items because maybe it might only cost me a couple of hours. Maybe I can make that sacrifice. But especially when I was in my teens, my hourly rate was like seven pounds an hour. I could not afford those items I spent my money on and I really wish that I did not. And I saw things the correct way. The next mistake that I made literally until the other day was not spending money in order to save my time. I was one of those frugal guys that would literally be like, I'm not going to spend any money in order to get my time back. I will walk that 30 minutes instead of taking a bus that will, you know, save me 25 minutes. Now, I started making YouTube videos when I was 22 years old and I probably started earning money from it when I was around 24 years old. Now from the age of 24, I could afford a video editor to save me time and also a PA as well, a personal assistant to again, to save me time and help me make these YouTube videos. But for example, for whatever, whatever crazy reason, I would go to medical school and I would spend, you know, 10 hours a day doing medicine and I would spend the evenings and my weekends sitting down editing these YouTube videos. And although I really enjoy editing YouTube videos, it took so much time out of my day and it was really, really difficult to actually balance both medical school and recording YouTube videos. Now, the unfortunate thing is that this time that I would have saved by hiring a YouTube video editor could have been used for more higher leverage tasks. So tasks that only I can do. I could have given the job of editing to an editor and I could have used that time to record more YouTube videos, to work on my business, or just do something else that I much prefer doing rather than making YouTube videos. Now, what I wanna tell you guys and what I highly recommend you do is to decide on an hourly rate. What is your hourly rate? It might be your actual hourly rate from your job. Maybe you only earn £10 an hour working at your job. Or maybe it's something that you aspire to. Maybe you're only earning £10 an hour. But what you know is that you're worth £20 an hour. You know your skills are worth £20 an hour. Fair enough, you don't have that job yet. But maybe that is your, you know, your aspiration, that you, the hourly rate that you know you're worth and that you one day very soon will get. Decide on an hourly rate, right? Let's say it's £30 per hour. If you can outsource a task like video editing or cleaning or whatever, and you can pay someone a lower hourly rate than you earn, then you must, and I highly recommend you do, outsource that task and give it to someone else who's on a lower hourly rate than you. Because you can use that time, the free time you have, to earn more money because you're at an higher hourly rate and you will still make a profit even by giving those tasks to someone else to do. Now, money is something you can always make in the future, guys. Money is something that will always be there, but your time is something that won't necessarily be there. I'm so glad that I made the decision literally last year before I started my job as a doctor to find an editor, to find a personal assistant, to find someone else uh, on my team to help um, do graphic work, graphic design and stuff like that, to post content. That has been so helpful and it has probably 
save me around 12 hours a week and I've literally got a full 12 hours back. Now I can use that 12 hours to either earn more money at a higher hourly rate as a doctor or I can use that time to spend time with my family and friends and do things I care about. So please, please, please guys, decide on your hourly rate and then use the hourly rate to outsource any task that is not at your hourly rate. And even if it's slightly higher than your hourly rate, you can still decide to outsource it if you'd rather do that time and spend that time doing something else that you love doing. And the final mistake that I made for you guys, which is super, super important, is saving too much money and not using that money to make memories that you will have to last you the rest of your life. Now, I traveled a lot during medical school, but I certainly could have traveled a lot more. Now, as a doctor, every four months, I only get nine days off of annual leave. So essentially every year, I only have 27 days off of annual leave, which sounds like a lot, but I promise you guys, it really isn't compared to the three months off that you get as a student. Now, the 27 days a year I get, five of them go to attending appointments. Maybe I have to go attend a GP appointment, a hospital appointment. Maybe it's something else important that I have to attend. It probably ends up being around 20 days that I only have to actually enjoy and travel and make memories with people I love. And it's super hard when you're a doctor and all of your friends are doctors and they're working super many, you know, super hard and working loads of hours and you're doing the same thing, trying to align your timetable with your friend, your girlfriend, whoever it might be. Trust me when I say this, you will not have the time that you have in your early 20s and late teens. You'll never have that time again because your priorities and your responsibilities will, will continue to climb if you're watching this and you have free time now don't waste your money don't be silly and spend all of your money traveling stuff like that but if you can afford it and you can work harder then of course put some money aside to invest in your future by all means do that but also don't be too parsimonious and don't give up your quality time that you have now use that time to make memories with people you love so that when you're working as a doctor and you're working 12 13 hour shifts those memories will keep you going i promise you that now if this video has helped you guys out in any way or form please drop it a like make sure you subscribe with notifications on and before you leave here above bunch of videos on my channel that you might enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.